new videos every day. What makes video games so fun? And what makes them so addictive? And what made the World of Warcraft the number one online game ever? Sarah's on vacation over the Christmas holidays, so I will be taking her place in a couple of videos. My name is Jen, and she had said that she'll be doing a couple of videos on the psychology of video games, so that's what we'll be doing today. Usually when psychologists talk about the psychology of video games, they talk about behavioral psychology and the stimulating of the reward centers in the brain. So in my opinion, that's a pretty short-sighted view. So today, I'm gonna give you a completely different perspective. Instead of behavioral psychology, we're gonna talk about the humanistic psychology of video games. So if you think about it, most psychologists aren't gamers, and they certainly don't think like game designers. But game designers have to think like psychologists, or else the games just wouldn't be appealing. So there's a great deal of psychology that goes into video games. And if the video game designer doesn't think like a psychologist, well, the game's gonna suck. So here we have Maslow's chart of human needs. And they are physiological needs, safety needs, the belonging needs, the esteem needs, and the self-actualization needs. So under your physiological needs, you have your basic bodily needs, such as breathing, eating, sleeping, and going to the bathroom. So under safety needs, we have things like a place to live, a job, money, things to ensure our survival in the future. So under belonging needs, we have things such as friendship, romantic relationships, sexual intimacies, things that basically help us connect with other people. So under esteem needs, we have things such as self-confidence, self-esteem, reputation. It's how we view ourselves and how other people view us. Then at the top, we have self-actualization, fulfilling our full potential. It's kind of like being all that you can be. So you may be asking, what the hell does this have to do with video games? Well, let me give you an example. Have you ever heard of a video game called The Sims? If you compare that chart to The Sims video game, you'll see that your sim has physiological needs. And you have to make sure that your sim eats, sleeps, and goes to the bathroom. They have safety needs, which you spend a huge portion of your time trying to fulfill. For example, they need a place to live, a job, money, etc. So your sim has belonging needs too, don't they? They need to make friends so they can advance in their career. And hopefully they'll find a lover, which is part of the belonging needs too. And then in esteem needs, your sim has a reputation with other sims. In self-actualization, you want your sim to fulfill his full potential, fill out all those skill points. You want him to reach the top of his career path. So your sim has a lifetime aspiration. And if you can fulfill that aspiration, then your sim is permanently happy. So then you can say that, well, he's reached his self-actualization. So Maslow's chart is built right into the game, which revolves around fulfilling all the human needs listed on that chart. So you can say all successful video games mimic life to one degree or another. And then we have The Sims, which people can identify with, which made it the best-selling video game ever. So here's an interesting question. Do we see this chart of human needs in the world of Warcraft? Before we get into that, I wanna bring out one point about the chart. Your first two needs, which are physiological and safety, are more biological. And your other needs, such as belonging, esteem, and self-actualization are largely psychological. Now we do see the first two levels represented in the world of Warcraft. Your physiological needs are largely represented by your health bar. And if your health bar gets too low, you can eat food to recharge it. Safety needs are represented by your gear, the gold you have, your profession, etc. Feeding your character in the game 
doesn't mean you're going to be full in real life. And selling things in the auction house for gold doesn't mean you're going to be filling up your bank accounts. So it's impossible to fulfill your real life biological needs in a video game. But what about fulfilling your psychological needs? So here's the surprising thing. People actually fulfill their real life psychological needs in the video game. Let me give you some examples. People fulfill their belonging needs in the game by interacting with other people. People make online friends and people join guilds and this fulfills their belonging needs. Under esteem needs, you see people taking great pride as skilled players and esteem needs are built right into the game, such as your PVP rating and your titles. If you think about it, the word noob would have never been invented unless someone was trying to fulfill their esteem needs. Surprisingly, one of your primary motivations in a game like this is self-actualization needs, kind of like trying to reach your full potential. People are trying to maximize their level and constantly trying to get to the next level to get more talent points and unlock new skills. To some degree, video games mimic life. Kind of like when you're successful in your own life, you receive a certain amount of pleasure for that success. But instead of receiving pleasure for success in real life, people are receiving pleasure for success in video games. And that's not actually a bad thing until you get to a point where you're receiving more pleasure from a video game than you're really getting from your real life. So when people talk about game addiction, they're actually talking about people neglecting their real life. Sleep is one of your physiological needs, and if you stay up for days on end playing video games, well, someone may accuse you of being addicted to video games. If you're so busy playing video games and you neglect your wife's belonging needs, well, she may say you're addicted. So if you're a student and you're failing your classes because you're too busy playing video games instead of studying, someone's going to cry addiction. No one's going to accuse you of being addicted to video games until you start to neglect your real life needs. As you can see, video games and video game addiction has a lot to do with human needs. And if you want to play your video games, you can't afford to neglect your real life. In a future video, we're going to talk about how to overcome game addiction if you have one. In another video, we're going to talk about brainwashing. So if it sounds interesting, then subscribe. Thanks for watching. Please rate my video and see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, Go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.